Welcome to Brilliant Botany, I'm Claire, and today I'm gonna to be talking you through how to press a plant. If you watched my video last week about citizen science, you may have been inspired to do some science in your own home. Collecting herbarium specimens is a really fun way to create your own scientific collection and learn new flowers as you go. Today I'm gonna to talk you through the pieces that you need and how to press a plant, as well as the information about the plant that you want to gather. Keep an eye out in the next few weeks for the next installment, how to mount and create the label for your own herbarium specimen. But first I'm gonna show you the different parts of a press and why they're necessary and how they help you dry and press that plant. A plant press consists of four basic parts. The first First is the wooden frames that go on the outside of the press. You can buy specifically made plant press frames. These just happen to be pieces of wood that I use for that purpose. The next important part of a plant press is the cardboard that goes inside of it. This helps airflow through that'll dry out your plants and also provide some structure for when you're putting them in there. Next, this is somewhat optional, but this is blotting paper. Blotting paper also helps absorb moisture and dry out those plants while they're in there. And then last of all, the thing you're gonna put your plant inside of is newspaper. Newspaper, again, helps absorb moisture. What we're doing here is trying to dry that plant out and also helps you keep track of them and keep them safe inside the press. And then the last important piece is the straps that go around the plant press. These will create the pressure that actually smushes the plant inside of there and keeps it that way for as long as it needs to be. Now, if you don't want to invest in a plant press or all of these pieces, you can also just use some newspaper and some heavy books to start. I bought these straps at the hardware store. You can also buy straps with plant presses, same as the frames. So once you have your pressing process decided on, next thing you need, of course, is a plant to press. Today, as an example, I'm going to be pressing greater celandine. Greater celandine is really common for us, especially damp areas and roadsides. It's in the poppy family, and there's one other really cool thing about it, and that's that it contains latex. If you break off a leaf or something like that, you can see the yellow latex leaking out of it. This is to deter predators. If you're a tiny little bug munching on that, you're not gonna wanna keep eating if the latex is sealing your mouth shut. Now, when you're collecting, you generally wanna represent all parts of the plant in the pressed specimen. This means the flowers, the leaves, and the roots if you can. On smaller plants, I usually pull the roots out, but because this plant is a bit bigger, I don't really wanna pull out the entire plant. So I'm just gonna get some of the leaves and also some of the flowers. If you're just pressing at home like I am, I'm just gonna be walking right over to the press with the plant. You don't really have to worry about it wilting. If you're out in the field, Field, the flowers, you don't want them to kind of break down before you put them in the press. You want them looking as fresh as possible. One way to ensure this is to bring like a plastic bag with you and spray water in it. This humid atmosphere, kind of like with cut flowers, will help keep those plants looking fresher and perkier and you can just put anything you collect into that bag. Once you've picked out a plant that you're going to be collecting, there's a few things you want to write down that you're going to use later. The first one, of course, is what the plant is if you know. I've got my field guide right here where I've looked up what Setlandine is, despite having known what it is before, it's always good to check. Um, if you don't know what it is, or even if you do, it's always a good idea to write down some of the characteristics of the plant. Maybe how many petals it has, what color it is, because things will change once you put it in the press. It'll get faded, might be hard to tell how many petals it had. You're also going to want to write down where you found it, and if you want, you can also write down details about the area where you found the plant. Maybe other plants that were around it, whether it was sunny or shady, damp or dry, things like that. Then the last thing you might want to do is give your specimen a collector number. This is unique to you, and collectors will number their specimens starting from one and going up from there. So I number all of mine. I started at one, now I'm up in the 70s. All right, so now the fun part, actually collecting the plant. Cool. Making sure that I'm getting a section with flowers and then just popping it off like that. Let me get this to focus. There's some bright yellow latex that you can see even if it's not in focus. Pretty cool. We have our press and we have our plant. The first thing that you want to do is label the newspaper that you're going to be putting the plant in because that'll help you out a lot later. So this happened to be number 79 for me. And you'll notice this press is the size of a standard herbarium sheet and you're going to want to adjust your plant so that it fits on a sheet. Since this is just a demo, I'm not being too picky. So you're gonna wanna close this up, slide it between a blot piece of sheet of blotting paper and another sheet of blotting paper. Cardboard. I'll trim this in a second. And wood. And next we're gonna want to put the straps around it.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're on your way to having your own collection of herbarium specimens. Once that plant is in the press, you're gonna wanna leave it there and check on it. You can also switch out the newspaper as it gets damp to freshen it up and help dry out that plant. Look out for my next video, which I will talk about mounting and creating a label with that information you collected. I also want to extend a special thank you to my Patreon supporters who are helping Brilliant Botany grow. If you'd like to join us, you can pledge a monthly amount and get awesome perks in return. Just click through the link for more information. You can also find a link to my Redbubble for merch and Tumblr for blog posts. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.